uh, this tutorial, which links up with the September 4th um, introductory class, uh, will we'll build off of uh, the data structure discussion we had in the last video. At the last video, I showed you what was going on in the Pro Orientation Data folder. We talked about why we had to use catalog, the difference between vector and raster, and what the points of a point versus a line versus a polygon were. Well, now when I'm engaging with those pieces of data here, they are still referencing the actual raw source data here in the catalog. These are still shapefiles. But when you drag them here into your map, and you can turn them on and off and drag them on top of one another, we call them layers. And you're going to frequently hear this referred to. A layer is the same thing as a feature or a shapefile. It's just the layer is kind of like the visual representation. Right? I mean, it's not like, like farmer's markets are small purple dots, and it's not like neighborhoods are these giant yellow clusters, right? Those are symbologies and, and sizes and orientations that ArcGIS has automatically applied to them to make them viewable to you. That's a layer. It's really like the window through which we view our data, the curtains we put on it, the size, the shape, the extent. That's a layer. But it's also how we engage with our data. You know, we'll learn in future videos, when you start messing around with right-clicking and doing stuff here, you could fundamentally alter the data. You play around with stuff here, right? For example, you do not need to follow me, but if I were to right-click on that symbol, I get some more options and I make it blue. It's not that I suddenly went to the sky and poured a giant container of blue dye all over every neighborhood in Philadelphia. Neighborhoods don't suddenly become blue. I've just changed the color the way that they look. And if I were to delete it and drag it back, color would turn back to whatever ArcGIS chose as the base. Layers are also where we can play and learn more about the pieces of data. Now, I want you to right click the farmer's market quickly just to see all of the things you can do to a layer and a piece of data once you drag it in here. You can copy, you can remove and take it away. A super important thing we'll get to in a second, you can look at its attributes, right? You can look at the information that is within it. You can zoom to it. In a few lessons, we'll learn about this concept of joining it, right? You can take it and maybe add some information. You know, what if you had a, a shape file that were the boundaries of, um, let's say, cities, states, counties, and but it was all it was, boundaries. And maybe you wanted to know something about the populations within those counties. You could join that data. You could zoom to it. We talked about this concept of selecting that we'll dive into in a little bit greater in future weeks. You could go here to symbology. You know, I'll show you my preferred way to get there in a second, but I want to show you it's also possible to do it here. This is where you change the color, the shape, the size, so on and so forth. You could enable that when you click on them, how the information pops up so you can see. You can even go to these concept of properties and understand the data you're looking at completely. Right? General. What does this tell me? What can I do? The only useful thing here is the scales. This just means like if I want to make it not visible, you know, I can turn off the visibility. Let me just show you what this means briefly with the center lines. It's usually the best thing to do this in. So we're going to learn more about this next week when we talk about sort of creating geographies. But this down here is your scale, you know, 101 to, to, to 56, right? So I think it's one inch is, is 56,336 feet in this instance. So I could maybe say this is the farthest I want to view it. Like once I get out beyond this point, you know, don't show this layer. And then if I were to zoom out more, and I don't see... The streets, but if I zoom in right past 100,000, then I will see my streets. Just a way to sort of control information flow because every time you zoom in and out or change orientation, you have to redraw stuff. Uh, metadata is not that important. <coughs> Excuse me, source is. Um, I don't want to overwhelm you because we'll, we'll look at this in a little bit more in a future week. 
But this tells you a couple things. Like, where did you get it, right? I found my data here. Uh, what is it? It's a line. What are the units of measurement? Foot. That'll become more important when we talk about coordinate systems next week. And then these things, which I don't want to get into too deeply yet, but that define how it looks and the system of geography, the coordinate system that tell you how it should look and where it should be projected. I want this to look like nonsense to you right now, and it will continue to look like nonsense to you until next week when we'll dive into coordinates in a little bit greater detail. Let's go right back to where we did with Farmer's Market and open the attribute table. We'll even turn everything off and open the attribute table. And only when this is open will you fully get both elements of the picture, the G and the I in GIS, Geographic Information System. Now, ArcGIS chooses to put this down here. You don't have to do that. You could drag the table and just sort of remove it to, like, the world here. All right, and it'll just be sort of free-floating. Change its size. So what is it? Information, 0 to 54. A lot of stuff here, you know, so let's try to make sense of it. 0 to 54 means 54 farmer's markets. So that is the first thing that attributes do for you. They show you how information is structured, meaning when I've given you farmer's markets, each dot represents an individual farmer's market, right? If I were to open neighborhood crime population, right, it'll put itself here. Each one is a neighborhood, right? There's 158 neighborhoods. So every single row represents a neighborhood. If I open the street center lines, it's far different, right? There are 41,028. And you may first think like, damn, that's a lot of streets, 48,000 streets. But it's not actually showing you the street, right? If I were to select one, what it's actually showing me is this is 17th Street, and if I get to my addresses, this is the 1,242 to 1,298 block of 17th Street. So what's being shown here, each row, is individual street segments. It is a critical first step when you get your data. Open the attribute table and answer that question for yourself, how is my data structured? What does each row represent? Because if I start clicking on the rows, I will see how these points are connected to the data that underpins them. So let me find a good one here. Boom. So I just did that Christchurch one right there. And you saw that it sort of jumped up. No, nope, it didn't. Where did it go? Everything's a little delayed, so it's not selecting. Let me zoom down so I can see center city. So I picked head house and boom, right? I picked head house and head house, where head house is, lined up. If I pick Fiddler Square, I'll see something over here. And this is a good way to remind yourself. Each dot connects to a row. The rows are the pieces of geography. Each row is a farmer's market. Each row is a neighborhood. Each row is a street. So the columns then become the information, what you can actually know about each piece of geography. Well, in this instance, I can know the neighborhood the farmer's market's in, the name, its address, the day it's open, the time, the month. Does it accept uh, SNAP benefits? You know, what are the major bus routes that are on it? Those street center lines I mentioned before, we can see the street segment name, the to and the from direction, whether it's one way, the class of the road, when the information was uh, updated, the label, used to be a speed limit on here, I don't think it's here anymore, speed limit if it's sort of other data or anything else you need to know about roads. Those are the columns. Now in two weeks we'll learn how do you change information, how do you add new information, how do you edit and sort of update, but right now I want you to just see how it's structured and where it is stored. The rows correspond to the objects, right? Every row represents a different geographic object on your map. Every column represents the pieces of information you can know about that object. That is the I in geographic information systems. 
The last thing I'll show is an orientation, right? Knowing that we will dive into everything I've covered here in greater details in the next few weeks, is I just want to show you what's going on up here, right? If I come to neighborhoods and I suddenly see I have the option for three new bars I didn't, this will be a big part of the how to display and symbolize data lesson we have in a few weeks. But if I click on appearance, I see some of those things I did before, right? I have that uh, in beyond, out beyond. I can also do this thing and make it transparent, right? I could scroll the line and, and be able to see through. That's pretty helpful maybe when I'm laying pieces of data. Oh, I'm doing it to the center line. So just as a heads up, it will always respond to whatever's selected. So since I selected center lines, it was doing it to that. If I come now to neighborhoods, right now they're transparent. I got this fun thing called swipe. That's cool where I can like grab it and look at what's behind it. Hello, hello. Just I need to remind myself sort of what's going on, you know, but nothing too critical. And then most important, and that we'll have a whole lesson on here, is symbology. How you change the color, the shape, and the size. You want to explore this on your own? Absolutely, please go ahead and do it, right? I have videos on my YouTube channel for enterprising students that want to get ahead of the curve. We'll have a whole lesson on this in a few weeks. But just to sort of give you an example, right, I can do everything from change the color of individual shapes, give them different colors and sizes and shapes based on some information, or even sort of graduate them based on numerics, right? I could say, take yourself and, you know, uh, see the number of burglaries you have divided by your population. Use quantiles to break that into five equal parts. And suddenly I've created a map that'll show you which neighborhoods have the highest burglary per population and which ones have the lowest relative to everything in Philadelphia. That is symbology. The other two are labeling. Labeling is not something we'll do this week, but it's how if you wanted there to be a way where everything would show its name or some other information, you can click on this label thing. It's going to take a second to digitize. I wasn't thinking this one through. Yeah, hold on. There we go. And every sort of name will come up and show itself, blah, 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 blah. And I can turn it off if I don't want it to label. Talk about that more when we get to the symbology. week. The final one here is data. This is just another way of integrating with the attribute tables. Right In a few weeks when we learn about how to add attributes and remove them, this is how we will engage with that piece of data. So it's just me showing you that there are many different pathways to get where you want to go in ARC. You can right click and add your attributes or change your symbology. You can click on the layer here. As we go through each week, we will learn more and more which we are comfortable with. So that is the I, right? The information in the geography. G is the farmer's markets. These are layers representing a piece of data that exists here. Each of those pieces of geography has some information, some columns like in a table that tell me some stuff about the farmer's market. Those are the absolute basics of GIS and the basic stuff that I want you to have a handle on in week one and week two. Everything we learned today in the September 4th class, we will dive into to a much greater specific degree in coming weeks. But these should hopefully give you an orientation to some degree as to what you're looking at when you start to drag pieces of information in here, zoom around, and play with.